19. It's 8.50 something in your Bible. The Bible is not here, but you can read it from the screen. And it reads as follows. This is the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, ten lepers approached him, keeping their distance. They called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Give up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of the Lord stands forever. Be thankful. Let's bow for word of prayer. God, you are incredible. And we are thankful that as we are very sure of your presence here, we are equally as sure that we are poised for you to open our hearts, our minds, our spirits, to receive a word from you that you will speak in spite of us and beyond us. God, that each of us, both individually and collectively, may receive from you what we need to receive, that we may be transformed, that we may grow, that we may be stretched, that we may come closer to the being you have created us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So when I was 16 years old, my dad had convinced me that I was not getting a car. <laughs> Even though I was in all these extracurricular activities, I went 50 million places. He says, no, we're not going to be able to get you a car. I said, okay, fine. But then one day he comes up to me, he says, take a ride with me. I'm like, where are we riding to? <laughs> He said, just get in the car. So I got in the car, you know, from the old school. No question, your parents, you do what they say. Amen. That's old school now. <laughs> so I get in the car and we ride to his friend Dowdy's house. You know, that's from the country when someone's named Dowdy. <laughs> Dowdy. <laughs> he was a car auctioneer. And so we get there, we pull up behind this Buick Regal, and my dad asks, he says, what do you think about that car? I said, it looked like something my grandma would ride. Mm. He says, well, it's yours. I said, oh, you meant that car. <laughs> I said, I thought you meant that car over there. <laughs> I said, thank you, but in honesty, I didn't really feel all that thank you, that thankful. And at 16, all I could think about in my head was how embarrassed I was going to be to drive a Buick Regal to school every day. So I got in that car, and I'm driving home, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to be thankful. God is going to give me something way cooler than this pure grief, right? I was thankful, but I was thankful for the wrong reasons. I wasn't thankful because, you know, I had a car, but most kids didn't even have a car to drive, much less one to call for. I wasn't thankful because I had no way of buying a car on my own, and I had somehow graciously received one. I was thankful for the wrong reasons, and so what that teaches us is that saying you're thankful you're thankful or thank you. It's not the same as feeling or being yeah. thankful. Right. Amen? Right. right. So Jesus is traveling to Jerusalem and he comes to the region somewhere between Galilee and Samaria. Now last week, for those of you who were here, we learned a little bit about Samaria. Um, but Jesus approaches this region and ten lepers um, approach, but they don't come too close. So leprosy back then was not what we know it as today. Leprosy then could be any number of skin diseases. And once you were deemed um, contagious and unclean by a priest in Jewish culture, um, you were outcasted. So you couldn't come close to people. And even when you did, you had to kind of cover your mouth and announce yourself, right? So they approach, but they don't come too close. And they call out to Jesus and they say, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And so Jesus says to them, go and present yourself to the priest. 
Now this is another custom in Jewish culture that once you were found to be healed, you had to then go and present yourself to the priest so that you could re-enter society. All ten immediately turned and they head toward wherever the priest is going. But one of them among this ten happens to look down and he sees that for the first time in God knows how long, his skin is not filled with sores and pus. And I want you to just to imagine for just one moment that you can see him discovering that he has been made clean. He looks, he's astonished. Maybe he's a bit teary-eyed. Maybe he just starts to whisper, thank you. Thank you. He gets louder and louder and louder and he begins to proclaim thanksgiving to God and praise to God very loudly. But then he realizes that saying it isn't good enough. He's got to go back. So he turns and he retraces his steps. He falls prostrate, face first, at Jesus' feet in praise and thanksgiving. Now Jesus' response is, at first, a series of questions that seem to be posed to no one in particular. So today we're going to pretend that they're posed to us. Jesus says, we're not ten clean." Where are the other nine? Did none of them come back to give praise for being healed except for this one? And he's a foreigner. Then he looks down at this man and he says, get up. Go on your way. Your faith has made you well. Now we've been in this series and we're coming to the close of this series of Jesus I Never Knew. And I think that one thing at the outset that may be worth mentioning about Jesus in this passage that I found to be so profound and that quite possibly I was very convicted by was this idea that Jesus clearly in his questioning seems to be at least a little disappointed that the other nine don't come back. Right. But even though he's disappointed, he does not retract their healing. So even if it's a disappointment, and even though they didn't do what they probably should have done, right? Jesus does not change his act of love. Right. Yeah. And that's a lesson to me. Because I know when I'm around ungrateful folk, <laughs> that made me not want to present any more acts of love. Right? You ungrateful. That's all right. I do my stuff, right? <laughs> But I feel like Jesus' questions also lead us to answer a larger question that's important for us today. And that question that I feel like we need to answer is, what was it about the one that was different from the nine? What was it about this one man, this Samaritan, that was different from the nine? So the first question Jesus asked is, we're not ten clean, cleansed. I'm sorry, I, first time I'm hearing my baby on oh, preaching. We're distracted. We're not ten cleansed. Where are the other nine? So the very first thing that we see that is different between this one man and the nine is that he had different actions. His actions were different. Now here's the definition of thankfulness or gratitude. So gratitude is this this um, inclination towards being thankful, but it's also a readiness to show appreciation for and to return a kindness. Right. To show, right, as in to actively do something. Right. To show appreciation for and to return a kindness. This is the one man who does what? He turns around and he goes back. He does something that the others do not do. Right. Now, when I was serving as a university chaplain, I remember getting a call one day from the director of alumni affairs, and she says, Donna, she says, I have several scholarships that I want to give to students, and we need to pinpoint some students. She says, and there's two criteria. She says, one is need, and two, they have to write a thank you. I said, great. Our students need to learn how, you know, to write notes for when people do nice things to them. And so we selected the students, you know, yes, they were all in need, and we made them all write a thank you. But the true test came after they received the money. It was only a handful of them who actually spent the money on what they were supposed to spend the money on. 
And another handful of them who actually stayed diligent in their studies to honor the gift that was given. Now those are the ones who were truly thankful, right? No matter how many times we make someone write a thank you note, it's the difference between writing something or saying something and actually being something. Your actions will reflect whether or not you are actually thankful. This man was thankful in his praise, in his posture, in the things that he did, he was thankful. Now sometimes you can act like you're thankful. You can go through the actions of being thankful and actually get to being thankful. Right. Okay, let me explain. We go back to my Buick. <laughs> when I got home that day, and I decided, you know, I'm going to be thankful, right? That was the decision I made. I'm going to go through steps of being thankful. I'm going to do the stuff that says I'm thankful. I get home that day, and my sister is home from college. And my sister, anybody who knows my sister, she's four years older than me, and she's crazy. <laughs> and my sister comes up, and she sees that my daddy bought me a Buick, and I see the look on her face saying, I can't believe daddy bought you a Buick. Right? And she got a Nissan Max, and I know that's a little jacked up, but you know, daddy's like, hey, this is what I can afford. And I'm like, ooh, that's fine. So before she could say anything else, I said, whoa, 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 whoa. A whole lot of people ain't got cars. Right? I said, in this car right here, it's going to be from point A to point B. And I'm thankful. Right? And she says, all right, cool. You know, as long as you're cool with it, because I wouldn't be, but you're cool with it. Do that. Right? And so what other actions did I do? I decided I was going to keep that car clean, inside and out. Right? I was going to drive it very carefully. Right? I wasn't going to let my friends come in and mess it all up. Well, my mom didn't let friends around me anyway, so she was like, nobody else's kids in your car. Right? I was also going to make sure that I didn't compare myself to other students or kids in my school who had something I felt like I wanted, yeah. but didn't have. Right. right? And so I actively did these things that were like acts of gratitude. Yeah. So as it turns out, the brakes went out on that car, clearly God is gracious. Right? And the, the cost of replacing the brakes was more than the cost of the car. So I had to get another car. I got a Chevy Cavalier, which was much more sporty, you know, still a little questionable, but much more sporty, right? In my privileged and title mindset, right? But actually, believe it or not, when I went to let go of the Buick, I actually felt a little sad. I missed it. Right? Somewhere between choosing to, to be thankful and to do the things that showed that I was thankful actually got me to the place where in my heart I was. So much so that it kind of hurt that the brakes went out and my daddy wasn't able to fix the car. <clears throat> now some of you may be saying, Donna, I don't know about that whole faking it till you make it back. <laughs> right? But I challenge you. <coughs> on a day when you don't feel like it, Start giving God thanks for stuff. That's called praise. Yeah. And when you don't feel like it, just do it continuously over and over and over and over and over and over again and see what happens. Yeah. I promise you, this is one of the only times where faking it until you make it actually works. So the first thing that was different about this man was his actions. Right. Yeah. The next thing Jesus asked were, you know, where were the others? They did not come to give God praise. Right? For what he has done. Only this foreigner. Now the fact that this man is a foreigner, the fact that he is a Samaritan is highly significant. Why? Because Samar Samaria was not a highly liked place. Okay? And quite frankly, Jews and Samaritans didn't get along. Right? They didn't like each other at all. Now all of these lepers, right, have been through an ordeal. Right? But this one particular leper was from Samaria. He was disliked, probably even among the lepers that he was with. Right? So the, the, thing, the second thing that we see that is different between this man and the other nine is that he doesn't seem to have any sense of entitlement. He doesn't seem to have any sense of entitlement. Now all of them were at risk for what is called destructive entitlement. What is destructive entitlement? Destructive entitlement is this idea or this concept that you feel like you are owed something because of the injustice 
or the unfairness, either perceived or real, that you have endured. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, what's destructive about this kind of mindset is that people who have a destructive entitlement, they feel like they can take advantage of other people to get what they feel like they deserve. Mm -hmm. Or they feel like they, can, they are justified in holding a grudge because of the bad things that have happened right. to them. Right. right? Now, this man was at high risk for this kind of mindset. How do we know? We know because he was from Samaria. People don't like Samaritans, right? right? He had leprosy, which means he was outcasted, so even his own people right. outcasted him. He was separated and isolated. Any form of isolation is a form of dehumanization, right. okay? And then he had lived with this disease in his body, the pain and the suffering. And yet this man shows no signs whatsoever of entitlement. As, in fact, scholars who have studied this say that he actually shows what they call um, some of, something more like a, a normative thankfulness, right? What is that? That means that it is more than likely that this man, based upon his personality and his actions, was even in the midst of his suffering able to find things that he was thankful for. Right. That there was something about him that inclined him towards being grateful and thankful. Right. But destructive entitlement aside, even for us in here, anytime we feel like we're getting something that we deserve, it's hard to be grateful for it. Right. Right? right? Now, when I say deserve here, I don't mean deserve as in I feel like I'm valuable enough to receive good things. That's not the kind of deserve I'm talking about. I'm talking about the kind of deserve that says, I am owed this because I earned it. Right? There's a difference between those two things. Now, the Jews, who were these lepers, had more than likely since birth been told that they were chosen and especially loved by God. Now that is a beautiful and powerfully transformative thing in the development of a person. To be told since you were born that you are chosen and especially loved by God. But if we aren't careful, and I say we because those of us living in America, most of us are ten times more wealthy, no matter where we fall on the economic spectrum, than most people in this world. Right? If we are not careful, this kind of mindset can make us slip over into a place where we feel like we are owed and deserve some certain things. Yeah. Right? Right. It's called entitlement. Mm -hmm. But this man also seems to appear to understand that Jesus gave something to him or did something for him that he couldn't do for himself. Right? right. Yeah. Right? He couldn't do it. Now, some of you, I shared our testimony with you, but when Deirdre and I were in North Carolina and God blessed us to, to buy a home, it was a blessing, trust me, based upon our salary, it was a blessing, okay? But I remember moving into this house, and I'm like, man, God, thank you so much for this house, but we ain't got nothing to put in it, right? You, you start thinking about a house, an apartment, and you got to buy furniture, like that, the, it adds up. Yeah, right. But believe it or not, Day by day, piece by piece, year by year, our house became fully furnished with very, very nice stuff. Right. Very nice stuff. Every bedroom set that we had was given to us. Our living room furniture, given to us. The rug on our living room floor, given. Our washer and dryer, given. Our table and chairs, given. Our dining room table and chairs, given. Even the man who came to repair our um, hot water tanks in our refrigerator. We had to fight with him every time in order to pay him. Every time. And each person who gave generously out of their heart said to us, we're doing this because we love you and we are proud of the work that you're doing for God. Amen. Right? And that work that we're doing for God won't pay us. <laughs> but it turns out it didn't matter. Yeah. It didn't yeah. matter what our salaries were because God still gave us what we could never afforded to do or give to ourselves. Yeah. Right. Right. This man got that. Scripture says he glorified God. To glorify God means to make clear the glory of God. What is glory? Glory is magnificence. It is beauty. It is um, honor bestowed upon someone for a noble achievement. It is noble that Jesus does for us the things that we can do for ourselves. Yeah. It is the glory of God. Right. This man was different from the nine because he had no apparent signs of being entitled. Yeah. The third thing that Jesus says is he says to this man, he says, get up, 
and go on your way. Mm. Your faith has healed you. Yeah. Now I will contend that the third thing that is different between this man and the nine is his faith. Yeah. Now all ten had faith. Right? They all approach Jesus. They say, have mercy on me. And they are healed because they are obedient to Jesus. Right? right? That's faith. What is faith? Let's look. Complete confidence or trust in someone or something. Right? So they all had complete trust that Jesus could heal them. Right? But there was something different about this man. There was something different about the way he trusted and had confidence in God. I would contend that this man saw something beyond Jesus' ability to do something for him. Right? I would say that this man's faith, his confidence, or his trust in Jesus had to do more so with the fact that he realized that Jesus made a decision to heal him. He recognized that Jesus didn't have to. Right. But he chose to. Right. Now that's an amazing kind of revelation. To know that somebody is doing something for you because they chose to do it. Not because they have to. Or they right. feel obligated. Right? Sometimes we talk about God in this way that says, you know, God can't do this and God can't do that. And so far as, you know, God can't not love or, you know, God can't not heal. Right? right. Yeah. But the truth of the matter is God is God and God can do whatever God wants to do. Right. It's good. At least the God I know can. Amen. <laughs> right? God can do anything. This man recognized that God, Jesus in this particular instance, had made a decision to love him. And his gratitude, his thankfulness was speaking to that part of Jesus. Right. His gratitude was saying, I am speaking to the part of you that allowed you to make the decision to love me, even though you didn't have to. Mm -hmm. He saw a part of God's essence and his gratitude and his praise was speaking to that. He saw the loving essence. He saw the beautiful essence. He saw the healing essence. He saw a part of God that made him decide to love. Yeah, right. Despite the fact that he couldn't have said no. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> when I was in North Carolina, I went to visit a friend and her daughter and her niece were there. So her daughter introduces me to my friend's niece and I say to her, I said, oh, it is such a pleasure to meet you. I said, you're so and this young girl, who's seven or eight years old, she tears up. And she looks at me and I say, you know, whoa, what's wrong? I said, don't, you know, don't cry, what's wrong? She reaches out and she hugs me. And she says, thank you. Seven or eight years old. And in that moment, her gratitude towards me was so genuine, it was so pure, that it made me want to give her more. It made me want to spend more time with her, okay. right? Her gratitude reflected back on me any decision I made to be kind to her, right? right? And it made both of us want to reciprocate kindness, right? Right. In that moment, or in any moment, when someone does something for you, when you are grateful and truly thankful, you are speaking to the part of them that decided to put forth this kindness to you. Right. It's not about the decision, it's about what made make the decision. Right. You're speaking to their goodness. You're speaking to their beauty. You're speaking to that part of them that's most like God. Yeah. You're speaking to that part of them that has the freedom to give and also the freedom to choose not to give. Right. And the fact that they chose to give, you're saying, I thank you because you use that part of you yeah. to extend kindness yeah. towards me. Right. Now the power of this is that Jesus says to this man, he says, give up. Go on your way. Your faith has healed you. But wasn't he already made clean when he went to head towards the priest? His skin was already healed. Now some translation says your faith has made you whole. The word well here is translated as whole. May be made whole in body and mind. Now let me tell you something. You can't spend time as a person outcasted from society. You can't know that your body looks like something very different from how you were born to look, right? You can't live on the outskirts scrounging for food, right? And that not do something to your mind. Could it be that because of his gratitude, because of the depth of his faith, because he had confidence 
in God in a different way. Yeah. Could it be that Jesus was healing him not just in his body, but in his mind yeah. and in his spirit from the trauma that being left with yeah. that yeah. caused him? Yeah. He walked away a whole person. Yeah. And here's the thing about gratitude. Genuine gratitude opens up portals for you to receive more. Even though the core of gratitude and the motivation of gratitude is never about receiving more. Right. Right. But being in it means getting more. Right. So what's the difference between this man and the other nine? He had complete confidence in the essence of a God who chooses to love him when that God didn't have to make that choice. And it is that faith and it is that gratitude that made him completely whole. Yeah, good. That's the difference. Good.